Welcome back to Weekend Sunrise. We're sitting in a field of pot. No, we're not. This week, broadcaster Alan Jones joined the fight to legalise cannabis for medical purposes. New South Wales Premier Mike Baird has said that he may support decriminalisation and a government minister from the Nationals is drafting a bill. The proposed changes would allow people with terminal illnesses to possess small amounts of cannabis for medical use. But it's not only cancer and HIV patients using the drugs. Hundreds of Australian kids suffer from severe epilepsy and while illegal, the seemingly miracle effects have given many kids a new life. We are joined in the studio by a family who has seen the benefits of cannabis firsthand. Kerry Fredericks and her 15 year old son Blake. Uh, also joined by New South Wales Australian Medical Association President Dr Saxton Smith. Good morning to you all and thanks very much for being here. So let's start with you Kerry. Yeah, Blake was diagnosed with refractory epilepsy when he was two and a half and as far as I understand that means he basically doesn't respond to the normal um, medicinal treatments for epilepsy. You started him on medical cannabis in, uh, cannabis in February this year. W what has been the difference for Blake? Um, when we started in February, Blake was on 800 milligrams of Eplum twice a day, 100 milligrams of Zonagram twice a day, and 9 milligrams of melatonin. Um, at this point now, four months down the track, we've started weaning his medications. Mm -hmm. He's now only on 400 milligrams of Eplum twice mm -hmm. a day. Hi. And <laughs> <laughs> That's good news, huh? <laughs> and, 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 and what about the, uh, the seizures? How has uh, it, it changed? The seizures were in February. We were having two to three every night to every second night. When he was on the full dose of when all he was those, on the full dose that suite of, of drugs, conventional medicine. Mm. Um, and now he's using Malawi's medicinal cannabinoid tincture. He's mm. only actually having one a week. Right. What, okay. what led you to this? How did you discover it? And did you have any hesitations in using it? Of course we had hesitations. You have hesitations whenever you put your child on any new medication. Um, we did go to our medical team and we said, you know, we, what else can we do? And we basically tried ten different forms of anticonvulsants. Mm. We've tried two different steroid treatments. We've tried two different IVIG treatments and three different forms of the ketogenic diet with no success. Mm. And all we ever did was have side effects from all of the different treatments for Blake. Um, negative side effects unfortunately so we went to his team and asked if we could try it and what did he think and he said to um, give it a go give but he wouldn't be able to prescribe it for us due to the current legal sure system. sure um, and yeah and we gave it a go so uh, uh, Saxon you know obviously for families uh, like the Fredericks th this appears to be a miracle cure uh, and several studies have confirmed that cannabis can have medicinal qualities it's legal for such purposes in Canada, Austria, Sweden, Spain, Italy, parts of the US. What is the Australian medical community's response to cannabis as a treatment? I guess you have to look at what we're treating. Yep. So if we look specifically in Blake's case, in epilepsy, there is a growing balance, you know, evidence of literature where it's showing positive benefits. To the point that in the US, at the end of last year, so six months ago, the Food and Drug Authority have approved a trial to look at uh, the synthetic cannabinoid. Mm -hmm. And this is not smoking joints. It's mm. actually a, a specific component of, of the cannabis yes. plant in this setting. And the key thing is also, particularly when you're looking at epilepsy, the actually smoking of joints, if you take the whole of the marijuana plant, makes epilepsy worse. Right. So it's only a, a specific component that is in that whole cluster of the drugs that, sure. and, and elements in that product. So what's chemically different then from smoking pot? Well, there's a specific element of it which is called, I always struggle with it, mm. it's uh, cannabidiol. So it's a specific type of diol oil that's in it and not that THC or the hallucinogenic component that is part of epilepsy, um, and which will make epilepsy worse. Right, so, so there is no psychotropic effect of, of ingesting these tinctures. You don't get high. No, not right. at all. You actually, the only effects Blake has had from it is to have been more alert. He's doing better socially, academically, and mm. just being a healthier, happy boy in general. So, so explain, Saxon, then, why um, the, the AMA would be happy for trials of a synthetic cannabinoid, uh, but not for the real thing. It comes down to the ability to make the dose right for patients. So it's quality control in the sense of every plant is different when it's made up into, uh, into a drug or a tincture like this. So there'll be variation between every batch that's made. 
firstly. Mm -hmm. So when you're dealing with more of a synthetic style, it's very controlled. You know the exact amount that's being given every single time. Furthermore, you're then able to titrate or adjust the dose up and down as needed based on both the positive effects and the negative effects. And then there's also this really stringent what we call pharmacosurveillance. So any drug that's on the market in Australia has long-term follow-up about positive and negative effects associated with it. So we, and that's you know fed around the world and shared around the world. So we have a collective experience. Mm. When you're dealing with products, have there been any studies on the long-term effects? Well, that's the difficulty. So this is sort of in a, a new world. And we know that this is a brave new world in some regards mm. with a lot of research and discussion, but it is still quite controversial in the medical literature uh, in the various settings. But there are settings in the pain relief and HIV and, and mm. chemotherapy, nausea-based patients where there's strong evidence. Karen, Karen, what would you like to see the government mm. do about this? I would like the Australian government to take care of their people. And in saying that, firstly, I would like... Tony has a submission in, Tony Bauer from Mulloway's Medical Cannabis, to grow cannabis. Mm -hmm. And if his submission is approved, then he would be able to continue supplying medicine to the children, over hundreds of people he already treats. And he's got thousands on his waiting list, so potentially he could help a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, I would also like the medical profession's hands not to be tied and be able to prescribe it to their patients and share in the joy when their patients are getting better. Sure. As far as I understand, you are not allowed to run uh, clinical trials on children. Well, Is that a problem for researchers? Well, it depends on the setting and it goes through the approval processes as far as the ethics and, and the likes. But I do know that as we speak, there's an application from a company in Tasmania that is looking to, to approach the government and applying to the government to be able to grow medical yep. marijuana um, plants to then take out that psychotropic component, the THC component, to then use in medical trials. And okay, that's so similar to what Tony doing. Bauer is doing with yeah. Mulloway's there. Right. So that's out there closely now. Regulated. Right. Thanks so much for coming, especially all the way from Carajong. I saw you yawning before, Blake. I know it's very, very <laughs> early. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming in. Thanks, Steve. And tonight on Sunday night, Helen Kapalos investigates medical marijuana, including talking to a former drug squad detective turned drug supplier to help his son. Every viewer will have the chance to vote on the issue in real time during the story. There you go.